Hello everybody, Chris Reed here, and today I'm going to show you guys how I use Reason Players to make beats in Reason 12. Players are MIDI note generators, and they're really great for getting out musical ideas quickly without needing to be a multi-instrumentalist. I use Reason Players in Reason 12, but keep in mind, all of the tips and tools that I'm going to show you today can be applied to the Reason Rack plugin, which can be used in any of your favorite DAWs, including FL Studio, Logic Pro, and Ableton. All right, guys, so I'm here in Reason. I got a track open where we can check out Reason players. Let's take a listen. So here in this first section, you can hear the baseline, which is being created using the Reason Player baseline generator. We also have a variation of that baseline as well. The baseline generator is creating that baseline, and we actually are using automation to change between the different patterns that were created. It's very easy to create different patterns with the baseline generator. Using this drop down arrow, we can click on the arrow and hit copy pattern, and we can select a different pattern to copy it to. And now that same pattern that was on five has now been copied over to eight. Once we have a copy of any pattern inside of baseline generator, we can then alter the different parameters of baseline generator to create a different variation of the baseline. The first thing we need to do is actually have a bass instrument. Then we can right click on that bass instrument, go to players and select baseline generator. From here, you will be given the regular patch. But of course, you can start implementing different patterns just by simply pressing randomize and going to different patterns. The randomized engine is truly remarkable because it will generate these baselines and then all you would have to do is go back and maybe touch up some of the parameters. So let's take a listen to these baselines that have been created. <laughs> So that's a really cool baseline that has been generated just by using the randomize button on the baseline generator. We can take it a step further by playing MIDI notes with the baseline generator. So right now, baseline generator is set to C2 as the root note. But if we play it and then also add in some MIDI notes, we can actually change the root note to be on a different note. And then that way we can actually create the movement in the baseline just like we did in the track before. And we can actually record those changes in the root note as well. So here are the recorded MIDI notes that were just played. As those notes are playing in our sequencer, it changes the root note in the baseline generator. I'm actually gonna make sure that I save that patch because I wanna use that for later. But for now, we're just using that to demonstrate how we can use Baseline Generator and how we can get a little in depth with how we can use it. If you're looking in this green section here, these are the notes that are actually being played. And these little buttons, these little circles down here indicate the actual velocity of those notes. So as you click and drag down, you get a softer note. And as you click and drag up, you get a louder note. You can actually use this button send to track and it will record out all of the MIDI notes that are being generated by the baseline generator. So now we can see these are all the MIDI notes that were generated by the baseline generator. So 
another section of this beat where we use the player is in this percussion section. The player that we use to create that percussion loop is called beat map. Beat map is super cool because it's basically like having a drummer right there in reason. Let's add another instrument and then add the player onto that instrument, which is the beat map. The main functionality of the beat map is right in the middle of the device where you have these coordinates, these X, Y coordinates, and these correspond to the complexity in which your drums are being played. We can use this button right over here, which is another randomized type button where we can just spawn our X, Y coordinates wherever we would like them to be. We can also use this button here to change the density of those different notes that are being played. So the higher that you raise the density, the brighter that becomes on the map and the more you will hear of that sound. Um, right here in the center, this is a lot of kick activity. So we can put our density about there. Uh, let's go ahead and hit random density uh, so we can do that. Let's dial down our kick and we'll just go ahead and play so we can hear those drums. Instantly, it just creates a drum pattern for you. And if we want that, if we want that rim shot to be a snare instead, all we need to do is click and drag right here where it says C sharp one and drag up to D one. We can also use our keyboard and use this learn key in order to figure out which key we want to be in that position. So we know we want that for that and we want this one for this one. For our hats, let's actually hit the learn key again. Hats are right here and percussion we can put to this tambourine here. Now let's listen to it. So I really like that kick drum. So let's go ahead and lock the kick drum by clicking this button lock position. And we'll move the beat map so that we can hear different patterns for the different drums. Let's add in some hat. We're not really getting a lot of hi hats in there. Let's add that in. We can make that drum pattern slower if we want. Or we can also make it faster. Now let's take a listen to the baseline generator pattern added with the beat map pattern that we just created. I mean, what's a video if you can't have fun every now and again? All right, so let's say we wanted to replay those drums that we included and we actually wanted to use a player instead of playing them by hand. We actually can go to our redrum and create the drum sequencer player. And here we can map out the same drums pattern that we have for the beat. And we have pretty much just created that same drum pattern. Why I like Drum Sequencer is you can actually add in some variations and you have this ability to use what's called probability in order to create variation in your drum pattern that you don't have to program manually. So for example, let's go to lane C1 where the kick drum is and let's turn the probability down to 50, 58% or so. So what that means is that 58% of the time, there's a probability that that kick drum will not actually play, which will actually change the drum pattern over the length of the track rather than just have it being the same exact loop. So 
So at this point, it's not playing it at all. So I'm going to just increase our probability just a little bit. So we make sure that it plays more than it doesn't play. Cool. We can also add in those triplets and flams that we love to hear in hip hop production as well, just by using this repeats tab. So we'll go to our hi hats and we'll actually use the repeats and we can have a repeat twice, three, four times. You know, it really just depends on your style. What about that hi-hat? Let's give it some more variation. Let's say we don't want it to hit on the one every single time. We can actually use this slide feature here by changing from speed to slide. We can just give it a few different nudges so that it's not hitting on the one every single time. Now that we've used the drum sequencer to alter our drum pattern and give it some variation, let's hear it back. We can also add in some performance with this drum sequencer as well. So for example, let's go up here where it says preset, we'll hit copy and paste. If we want to copy the entire pattern, then we just need to hit this C at the very top, go to our next pattern and hit P and that copies the entire pattern. And then this time what we'll do is actually put the reset step to a different number. So now it'll create a different performance of the drum pattern. We can do that a couple more times. Let's paste that and then let's actually start on this pattern. I don't think that's how they intended drum sequencer to be used, but it's definitely fun to try it. Now, another way that we can actually record that in, we're going to do that right now is by going to our sequencer. So we're going to go to our sequencer and we're going to record enable, and then we're going to jump back to drum sequencer and make sure this direct record is on. And then we're going to go ahead and record and we'll record in that portion. To our sequencer we can see all of those notes have been recorded in So with drum sequencer, that's a super easy way for you to add variation in your drum loop um, so that you're not always just getting the same thing over and over again, but you're actually getting some variation. All right, guys, so that will do it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video on making some beats using Reason Players. And I showed you guys a couple different ways that you can use Reason Players. There are tons of players that we have not actually gone over, but I just wanted to show you guys a few of those players inside of Reason. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, peace.